Okay, so we're going to get started with this series. I'm just going to run these first few cells. And let's see how long it takes to read this 5 gigabyte file. So in previous benchmark I did, it took like around 8 seconds. So it seems it took around the same time. Okay, so let's take a look at these uh, few basic operations. So first thing we want to know is how how large the dataset is, how many rows and columns it has. So here you can see it's 67 million and nine columns. So we have a few different ways to print the date frame. So you can just do a head as you would normally do in pandas. And it prints it in this format that, <laughs> I, I mean, to me, it was a little bit weird the first time I saw it. Now I'm kind of getting used to it. But here you have the, the column name, the data type and the strings appear with quotes, which I mean, it's it's kind of weird, but it's also useful because you already know that it's a string or, or at least it's considering it as a string. So you can see that this is an integer, for example. And, and yeah, and here you have a summary of the data types so of load, int and str and string. Um, so what you would call object in pandas. So Another way is to just print, call print on the data frame. And it prints, prints it in this format that um, if, you, if you've seen uh, Spark, it's, it's kind of similar to how Spark does it. Ah, to me, it looks a little bit awkward, but it's, it's not bad. And the other thing you can do is just convert it to pandas. And here you can just look at it the normal way you would always do this in pandas. So, um, so that's about printing uh, options. So you have a few ways, I guess, uh, as we're all a little bit lazy, we'll be ending, ending up using this one. Uh, but the other ones are could be useful in some cases. So then there are these uh, data types, uh, you can do the FD types. And it gives you these, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not very informative, but if you look at the documentation, UTF-8 is the string. Um, int, well, we know what int64 is. UTF-8, so smaller, uh, sorry, uh, string also. Uh, float and int UTF. So basically the, the D types of the data. So here I have, um, yeah, I prepared some code in order to demonstrate how to do common operations. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is to select some columns and then be able to do some uh, filtering. So this is what we would call select in SQL. So it's just selecting the columns and doing some operations on the columns and the where that's the like passing some conditions and how we would filter the data. So in order to get started, um, we'll see how this, uh, yeah, this this works in Polar. So the first way that we have is this um, indexing with brackets. So um, they are calling that they are saying that this is not kind of the recommended way to do it. It still works, but it might not continue working. Um, but this works as you would expect. So so the first row and all the columns. So um, you can do this and. Here you can pass a list on the columns and these just give me all the rows. So it's it's kind of similar to this df log or dlog, but there as there are no indexes in, in polars, uh, you don't need to pass that, which actually makes the the syntax a little bit simpler. So here you can pass into columns and just select the data. I personally like this uh, this way of selecting data. Um, I hope it remains, but we'll see. And then the other thing you can do is use filter. So uh, this actually works, but I mean, it really looks awful. So the way they are suggesting you do it is with the F filter. So you first do the F dot filter, then you do uh, you just select the column that you want to work with and you define a condition. So this is like a where in SQL, like you're just give me the prices that are higher than a thousand. 
So the data is of e-commerce. So they're mostly phones, smartphones, I think. So what costs $1,000 is mainly Apple phones. So, um, and yeah, so this is, these are two very simple, but very common operations that we do selecting data, so selecting some columns and then filtering the rows. So, um, so then the other way that's a little bit more idiomatic is, uh, using the df.select. So here I'm just going to show a sample of the data and yeah, we can, so we, we can see it again. So what I'm going to do next is select the brand and the price columns. So, um, basically I just pass in a, a list of these two variables here and, um, yeah df.select and just pass in the list of the columns that I want. So this is relatively simple and I'm still not doing any operation here, just selecting the columns, but it's still useful to know how to do this. Um, so then, um, if you do df with columns, what that does is it's kind of like keeps all the columns in the data frame. And then you can do add another column. So, so that would be the logic. It's a little bit different to pandas, this one. Maybe, uh, yeah, it, it's a little bit different, but I, I think of it as a select asterisk, as, as you would do select asterisk in SQL, and then you do something else with another column. So here I'm doing the price times 100, just something completely uh, pointless. So if, if I remove this alias here, uh, I mean, this is just the name of the new column. So if I remove this, we, we get an error here. So, um, or not, <laughs> no, it's, it's just kind of steps on the, the, the original price. So you don't want that. So, um, yeah. So if you want to create another column, you have to do this. So. I mean, if, you, if you're coming from R and you've used dplyr, this would be kind of like the mutate uh, kind of uh, yeah, operation. Um, there's a lot more on that in, in other functions in Polars, but um, this would be one way of doing that. So the other thing that we, we did before is using filter. Where this is just the same thing. Here you can just pass a, a Boolean uh, condition um, so price higher to 1000 creates a Boolean vector and we can just run that. And another, uh, useful thing to do is let's say you want to select few brands for your analysis. So you can do, um, the filter and then the, just ask that the column brand has these values. So, um, so if, if it makes makes it simpler. You can also indent the code like this. Um, to me, it's, uh, I mean, if I'm going to do this just one line, it's fine. But if I'm going to do more things here, I'd rather have it indented. So, um, and here you can also pass in a list uh, of conditions. Uh, so I'm just going to show how this works. Um, so yeah, so here I have the brands, Apple, Samsung, and Motorola. And okay, so this is kind of, these are kind of the basic operations that you would do basically selecting data without any operation and also uh, filtering it. So, so now I want to show you how you can make a few more interesting, uh, yeah, computations. So. So this is on the select context. So, so here you see what I'm doing, right? Just do df select, uh, parentheses, and I pass in this kind of list bracket. So, so what this should tell you is that you can do more than one operation. So same, similar to what I'm doing here. So if I run the first one, this will just give me the number of unique product IDs. I mean, this might be interesting for some reason. And uh, yeah, these are very common operations that you just want to know the number of unique values 
of a column or a bunch of columns. So here um, I'm doing, uh, yeah, some statistics uh, on the entire column or the, the entire price column. So the only thing about this is that if you just pass in this, it, it won't work because you need to create a different column for each variable. So, so let me show you, uh, let me show you this in another cell. So let's first run it the correct way. So this is what you would expect. So, um, so minimum, mean, median, maximum, and standard, standard deviation. So this gives you some statistics of the data. So, but if I, if I do this, um, well, I'll just remove this one. Um, so yeah, it gives an error and says column with name price has more than one occurrence. So it's just one, one thing to be careful about. I mean, the way I, I wrote the code, I first got this error and then I just added the alias. Um, so then, um, another thing you can do is compute, uh, statistics at the serious level. So, um, here. I'm doing the F select and I select the, the price column and then I can just pass the describe function and this describe function does something very similar to what I was doing above. So, uh, it's also a handy, uh, trick to know. Um, so, uh, yeah, so then, um, here I am selecting the price, uh, it's just extracting one column from the data. I mean, these are really simple operations, right? So here, just you can just print it. You can take a sample of it. So, so by taking a sample, the, the, the nice thing is that we can go from a very large data set to something smaller that we can uh, use in Panda. So, um, so here I have this, this line. Let me just put it above. Um, so I first grab the price, uh, polars series, um, that's a series is a one dimensional, uh, vector. So then I have this sample, uh, call. So I just give me 100,000 observations, but I convert it to pandas. And so what this would do is, uh, just give you a column of a data frame. And then I just call hist and the nice thing about this is that I can do all the pre-processing in polars, but when I want to do some plots and do some data visualization, I can do it in pandas. And here I, I, I did a, one more operation. I was curious about how to do, uh, I wanted to, uh, let me first run it, show you what, what this does. So I just wanted to get the percentiles, um, of yeah, of this variable. So just to get a better, uh, sense of the distribution. So, so here we have the median, um, and 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 are what, yeah, what, what, uh, what you generally use as the boxes in a box plot. So you can think that, you know, the values, so, so the 50% of the data lies within this, this, the 0 0.25, uh, percentile on the 75th percentile. So this gives you an idea of the center of distribution. So, so, and you can, you can actually see it here. So the median is like around, so this is 250. So in the middle of this, and I mean, yeah, I, I guess the, the box plot is, uh, the, the, the histogram is, it's difficult to see this in the histogram, but um, but yeah, most of the data lies here in this, in this most common. Uh, so that means that most of the products there, yeah, between these values, 69 and 360. Um, but yeah, that, so that, that's the, the first, uh, series of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, click the, yeah, click the subscribe button, uh, like the video. So I continue making more and. Yeah, if you have some interesting data set you want to me to analyze and do another series or just mention it in the comments, I'll take a look at it. Um, I'd like to make a few more videos on polars. I think it's very interesting. It's very easy to 
incorporate it in your day-to-day -day pipeline. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Till the next video. Bye.